Thanks. 12 inches of deliciousness. We're not sure how much of the audience will agree, but I'm of the opinion that the classic run of SpongeBob SquarePants is, at least currently, the most timeless kids' cartoon series of all time. You can go back to watching it as an adult and get just as much, if not more, enjoyment than you did in childhood for at least for the first three or four seasons. But that's not the only reason SpongeBob is timeless. In addition to having a great sense of humor, there is no shortage of clever gags snuck in for the older audience members, from pop culture references to weirdly dark subject matters to jokes so filthy that they would make Dirty Dan himself shudder. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and this is SpongeBob SquarePants Adult Jokes. Cleanest to dirtiest. Practically everything Squidward says. This might not count as a typical definition of adult jokes, but it's worth mentioning. I don't like the notion that everyone becomes a Squidward as they enter adulthood, but I do love and completely agree with the idea that we only fully understand Squidward as we get older. Whether it's his mourning of his dead hopes and dreams or his frustration with the world refusing to give him any R&R, Squidward is a mood sometimes. Coming to bed, honey? Staying on a similar subject, when SpongeBob and Patrick try and break Mrs. Puff out of prison, SpongeBob recalls how wonderful adult life is on the outside. The traffic, the meaningless work, the failing, loveless marriages. Man, when did this show get so existential? Coming to bed, honey? Yes, dear. Shout out to SpongeBob for staying so dang positive, somehow. Square Pattern Baldness Okay, I want to start this off by saying that in The Sponge Who Could Fly, SpongeBob is confirmed to have hair, and by extension, insanely precise hairstyling skills. But when SpongeBob leaves Sandy's dome with the excuse of needing a haircut, Sandy isn't sure of whether or not he's got hair, and if he does, just where is it exactly? Krusty Dogs the entire episode of Krusty Dogs is really just an excuse to have the character say wiener over and over. Hey, I liked your request, a wiener! Not limited to Squidward's line of hoping Mr. Krabs' whole wiener thing will blow up in his face. Just make the wieners! Wieners? Whether kids or adults, one thing is for sure, they know their audience. Wieners! 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 Patrick, your genius is showing. We briefly discussed this one in our 90s Nicktoons adult jokes video, but in the episode Texas, SpongeBob praises Patrick's idea to bring Texas to Bikini Bottom by telling him his genius is showing, to which Patrick covers his crotch and asks, where? I'll ask the same question. Does Patrick just genuinely not know where his penis is? Nancy's Pencil Organization Tips SpongeBob's OCD kicks in during one morning of boating school, and he overthinks how to organize his pencils and notebooks. Thankfully, Nancy's kind enough to give him some advice when prompted. Think it goes stuck inside your suggesting that one of the pencils belongs shoved up his Squidward's making waffles. Squidward is a great character, but you won't hear us denying that he can be a jackass sometimes. <laughs> In Fools in April, when he attempts to apologize to Spongebob for his cruel prank, he can't help but have his head transmutated into a sea donkey's, and Bray, wait what? And again in Christmas Who, when he realizes how much of an absolute jerk he's been to Spongebob, despite his lovingly handmade gift, he feels like a hee-haw, hee-haw, big jerk, by Squidward. Spongebob and Patrick are tasked with delivering Krabby Patties and a little submarine to the good people of Bikini Bottom. Upon being commissioned, Spongebob says his goodbyes to Squidward, then to Mr. Krabs, then really says his goodbyes to Squidward, if you know what I'm saying. Bye, Squidward. For a guy who's asexual, SpongeBob has a weird way of making relatively normal comments sound strangely suggestive. Do you want it to hurt me, Kevin? Case in point, his encounter with Kevin C. Cucumber, his now former jellyfishing hero. The coolest jellyfish enthusiast ever. SpongeBob will do anything for Kevin. Like anything, anything. He's more than willing to punch himself with a metal spike boxing glove for the pleasure of this cucumber shaped neck beard. Do you want it to hurt me, Kevin? I'll stick to Jeffrey Jellyfish, thank you very much. The Balloon. Not to be confused with the great balloon theft of 2001, SpongeBob presumably didn't steal. I mean, borrow this balloon. He paid for it fair and square, but I'd say he really shouldn't be blowing his money on it. <laughs> you know, get it? It's funny because it looks like a, yeah, we're not gonna say it. There's a concerning amount of things in this series that look like this object. 
Sandy Cheeks and Bikini Bottom Most of these jokes aren't too meta, but when you've got a town called Bikini Bottom and a character named Sandy Cheeks, and if we want to reach a little further, another character named Mr. Krabs, you can't expect us not to fill in the blanks. There's also that joke theory that SpongeBob is a tampon, but even I'm not buying that one. Bubble Bass's ad In one of the newest SpongeBob episodes, Hot Cross Nuts, Bubble Bass advertises Sandy's barbecue nuts on his butt. Oh my god, there's no way to say that normally. Normally. The yellow fish's line, this guy's butt loves those nuts, does not help. This guy's butt loves those nuts! Sailor Mouth. While it's not even remotely subtle, the episode Sailor Mouth is quite literally about SpongeBob and Patrick learning a swear word from dumpster graffiti. Dumpster writing, the voice of the people. It's unsure which word this is, but it's a fun rewatch since there's no concrete answer. <laughs> They could be saying literally anything behind those dolphin chirps. And furthermore, this episode has more replay value than a AAA platformer. The good reasons to run around in colored undies. When SpongeBob and friends team up with Mermaid Man to bring the IJLSA back into action and stop evil, Mermaid Man reveals that superpowers are actually stored in their costumes. After all, why else would we run around in colored undies? Well, Squidward assures us that he has three good reasons for it. I can think of three good reasons. And frankly, that makes it a bit disappointing that he doesn't at least have the consideration to tell us even one of those reasons. Also notable is his reminiscence on his time at Makeout Reef. How much you guys want to bet he made a few visits there with Squilliam. Extra Goofy Goopers The older we get, the more often we seem convinced that the characters in SpongeBob's world are mostly either stoned out of their minds or deeply mentally disturbed. In the SpongeBob movie, at least one of these theories is confirmed when SpongeBob and Patrick go on an ice cream binge at Goofy Goober's ice cream party boat. Why do I always get the nuts? When SpongeBob wakes up, he's stumbling with a rough hangover to the Krusty Krab to call out Mr. Krabs for not giving him the promotion he deserves. Go off little square dude, but maybe shower first next time. And now for the chaser. When Mr. Krabs flushes Plankton after yet another failed attempt to get his stubby little paws in the secret formula, he laughs heartily before claiming, and now for the chaser. And now for the chaser. It's suggesting that Mr. Krabs is about to take a dump, which isn't that mature in and of itself, but there was recently the discovery of some lost media called Behind Closed Doors, consisting of vile drawings depicting SpongeBob characters. One example is a story board of the now for the chaser scene in which Mr. Krabs actually took a violent on-screen dump. Really glad they cut that scene personally. No, Mr. Krabs, it's that time of the month. A giant red blimp arrives at the Krusty Krab, the shadow of which makes Mr. Krabs question his old eyes. Squidward assures him that it's just that time of the month, ladies. It's that time of the month. You know what he's talking about. Does it really look like a gigantic blimp, though? Nasty Patty. This is as good a time as any to talk about the classic SpongeBob episode that was about SpongeBob Bob and Mr. Krabs trying to hide what they fully believed was an innocent man's dead body from the police by burying it. Honorable mention to the later episode, Out of the Picture, which sees Mr. Krabs repeatedly attempting murder on Squidward to sell his art for ludicrous prices. The Mystery of the Coin Slot SpongeBob's brief time with Mystery the Seahorse led to her tied up on the bike rack outside of the Krusty Krab. Scooter mistakes her for a kiddie ride, somehow, and looks for the coin slot, only finding it off screen and promptly being kicked away. Guess Bubble Buddy wasn't the only one to make him experience high tide. And why aren't you in uniform? SpongeBob is too sweet to say no when Squidward is staying over during his time being fired from the Krusty Krab. He's even willing to play along when Squidward demands him to dress as a maid while bringing him food and drinks. And why aren't you in uniform? He's not even doing it for laughs, he's just doing it to humiliate SpongeBob. Is this some weird kink of Squidward's? The world may never know, and honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. Did you want to? Patrick having a crush on Mindy in the SpongeBob movie is innocent. The same cannot be said of his reaction when Mindy walks up to the pair while his pants are down. Did you see my underwear? No, Patrick. Did you want to? If nothing else, it's great that Patrick had both kindness to offer and the consideration to ask before flashing her. What a king. Now you get behind her and I'll put the inner machinations of Patrick's mind truly must be an enigma to advise SpongeBob to get behind his grandmother while he pushes when that was nowhere in his plan to prove to her that he's a grown up. And then you get behind her and I'll push. The best interpretation of this is that Patrick had the urge to cripple an old woman, which really calls a big guy's morals in the question a little bit. Sexy crab car wash. No explanation needed. Just soak this one in. Really let it marinate in your brain. Acknowledge that this is a canonical scene in SpongeBob and that Mr. Crab 
Krabs does this. Side note, how often does Mr. Krabs borrow Pearl's clothes? Well, at least it's underwire. Uh, pretty often, I guess. Or he's borrowing someone's. You're gonna miss the panty ray. In the alternate universe where he's Bikini Bottom's main panty stealer. Not the way I use them. Eat barnacle chips, they're delicious. They are most certainly not delicious. Not the way I use them. Patrick, Patrick, sincere question. How do you use them? How do you use them? There's like 1,000 ways I can interpret this. And the longer you leave me to my own devices, the worse they get. Please, please give us the answer. The world is begging for it. The Incomplete Snow Mermaid. Man, for a couple of kids, these little guys have some skilled artistic talent, huh? They sculpted this mermaid statue on their own. All that's left is two more big, round, voluptuous snowballs. <laughs> Who knows where they'll end up? A seven mile spanking machine. SpongeBob's butt has been broken, and he's gotta be extra careful. That means no football with Percy, who seems to be having a great time. It also means no participating in the seven mile spanking machine. Seven mile spanking machine, ah, ouch! Thankfully, Squidward has no such injuries to worry over. Is this where the line starts? Apparently, early series Squidward was a freak. Is this where the line starts? The Squidward's ending it reference. In SpongeBob in Random Land, there's a blink and you miss a reference to the infamous Squidward's ending at Creepypasta. Oh, and not a one-off line or something in the background. They actually decided to flash a picture of the infamous Red Mist picture on screen. There's no telling how many children they traumatized with this, and there's no telling how many more they did when they replaced it with this. It's just a prank, bro. Mr. Krabs manages to wash the invisible spray off of SpongeBob and Patrick after they go around pranking Bikini Bottom. Toast. No! Call it sheer dirty mindedness, but this screenshot really emphasizes just how low paying the Krusty Krab must be. Model Sponge. When Sponge thinks Mr. Krabs is firing him, yep, he's gonna have to watch. He searches for a new job and starts an acting career for a Sponge commercial. SpongeBob's shocked expression upon hearing, Lose the pants! Lose the pants really tells you all that you need to know. At least buy him a drink first, jeez. The Sports Channel. I remember this one going over my head as a kid. And your shoes untied. SpongeBob is watching a dancing sea anemone on TV, only to quickly switch to the Sports Channel when Gary walks in. I was always wondering why SpongeBob was so fearful of Gary's potential wrath over missing the big game, but it's clear now that SpongeBob was watching some naughty content. Absorbent, yellow, and apparently horny. Z Tickler. Would you believe me if I said a one time joke character in Karate Island is a metaphor for a condom? By this point, yeah, you probably would. Sandy has to fight the Tickler, a karate master who happens to be French. Tickler and my iron finger style. Yes, the French Tickler, also the name of a type of condom that basically turns your pee pee into a poom poom. It's even weirder when you consider that his defeat comes by Sandy chucking a tray of phallic jelly filled donuts into his mouth until he can't hold anymore. Uh. How did you know they were my weakness? Sorry about the scabies. Ah. Uh. Wow, this bakery had a cake specifically for apologizing for scabies, an infestation of flesh-feeding bugs that can be transmitted as an STI. This reveals that STDs are apparently enough of an issue in Bikini Bottom for a bakery to just happen to have a cake apologizing for transmitting them. Also note that the same bakery didn't have a happy birthday cake. <sighs> Do you want it or not? Don't drop them. Every SpongeBob fan knows that Gary Takes a Bath is peak fiction. One reason being the brilliant scheme of a pirate treasure hunt to get Gary in the bathtub. Two pink, soapy doubloons are his reward, and SpongeBob warns him not to drop them. Don't drop them. So, somebody gotta check on him. Someone check on him. Check on him. <laughs> Looks delicious. Squid Baby. Ugh, okay. I can't avoid talking about this episode for the grand finale. 72 hours later. The episode, Squid Baby is about SpongeBob and Patrick babysitting Squidward, who believes he himself is a baby due to a head injury. It's clear from the adult diapers, poop jokes, and just everything that this has got to be some creepy, barely disguised fetish. Where are your manners? It's not even a funny episode, it's just weird. It's the epitome of that era of SpongeBob that just didn't care at all anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if they just copy pasted some creepy fan fiction for the script. 